Hi, Deanna. <laughs> good morning. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I, I woke up this morning. I was like, oh, my goodness, I got this interview. I said, oh, wow, let me get myself together here. <laughs> Hello. Hello. A little, bit well, early, a little bit early for me, but it's okay. Is it me too? <laughs> yeah. Well, first, I just want to say congratulations on an amazing season at Illinois State. I realized you all scored over 2,000 points, over 1,000 rebounds. That's amazing. Yeah, um, thank you. It was a lot of hard work. And I tell you, I um, couldn't have done it without my coaches and my teammates and everyone around me who supported me. That's for sure. Well, I'm Deanna. I play on the women's basketball team here for under Coach Kristen Gillespie. Yes. Um, and to honor Black History Month, Red Bird Athletics wanted to, like, center our past and present on Black student athletes. And mm -hmm. since you have such an amazing mark here at Illinois State, we are very thankful that uh, in the work that you have done and that you are doing. Um, obviously, we have a few questions, too. Um, I was wondering if you could tell me about your journey to Illinois State. Um, yes. I, uh, well, um, as everyone kind of knows, I um, graduated early from high school. I felt like it was the right time to make a move like that. Um, I had the support of my family and my friends and um, coaches. I had been, uh, when I was younger, going to uh, basketball camps and um, went to the Y in my local area. And then um, I would go down to Illinois State for their basketball summer basketball camps. And I kind of fell in love with uh, the campus and the people and the coaches and the players and the idea of uh, leaving high school, um, you know, started entering in my head. Um, we went down state my freshman year in high school, um, which uh, was very, very excited. It was the actually first year for um, uh, the Title IX and um, the girls basketball uh, in Illinois. So that was great. I'm hoping to be able to come to that celebration uh, in June. And um, we did not win my first my freshman year, but it was a great experience. And uh, my sophomore year, we went back downstate, but they held it at uh, University of Illinois. The first year was at Illinois State University, and uh, we actually did win that. So um, in my junior year, I really still had that in my head that I wanted to kind of leave early. So I did all the preparations I needed, took all the classes I needed at the junior college and was able to graduate early and um, start my career at Illinois State University. Well, that's amazing. Um, so like, what was like the factors that made you attend Illinois State? Uh, I really just fell in love with um, the fact that it was uh, close to home. It's a beautiful campus. Um, there's a little bit of history there. My father went there for two years. Um, my oldest sister was there already. It was close to uh, my grandparents' house in Pontiac. So I think, um, and not too far from um, Shorewood where I lived, um, my parents, my family house. So I thought, you know, I'm pretty young, I'm 16. Um, you know, I'm able to get into college and, and start my career and, and, every, and I'm close to home. Um, they had what I, you know, I intended on being a teacher at first and um, ended up in, in uh, Parks and Rec Administration, which was such a fun major. Um, I thought maybe I'd do some teaching then, but um, I, uh, I basically, I just knew that this was a place where I wanted to, to grow and flourish and, um, you know, do the best job I could as, as a student athlete. Right. When did you start playing basketball? Oh my God. <laughs> um, I started playing when I was like six or seven, I guess. I was out there with the neighborhood boys. Um, I grew up in a pretty rural area. Well, when I was younger until I was nine um, and I would just be out there on the dirt basketball court with all the uh, guys from, we, uh, we call it the old neighborhood in uh, Joliet. And then um, our family moved when I was nine to um, the West side to, Shorewood and I continued to you know be outside shooting and playing and uh, formally started um, probably fifth grade but I wasn't able to play on the sixth grade team but um, they let me practice with the uh, junior high team at Troy Junior High so um, basically I just really just fell in love with the the sport and you know I still continue to play softball which I loved a lot um, I tried different sports in junior high like volleyball and I, I ran track a little bit, but mm -hmm. um, basically the sports that stuck with me were um, 
you know, softball and basketball, of course. I do love football, but dad was like, nope, you're not playing football. <laughs> so um, I basically, you know, started honing my skills and, and just, I don't know, there's just a passion that woke up in me for, for basketball. Mm-hmm. And um, I would, uh, from there, I would go to uh, basketball camps, like I mentioned before, and uh, just never stopped. <laughs> Oh, that's exciting. Did those like playing did playing other sports like help you like hone in on some of your basketball skills? Um, I would say more than hone in on basketball skills. Well, of course, like running track helped with conditioning and things like that. Um, volleyball, I played a little bit. That was uh, I think that helped with um quickness and uh hand and eye coordination. You know what I mean? Like that ball coming over the net, you gotta react to that, you know. Um, so yeah, I would say that each sport had, uh, something to do with, with me, um, physically and preparing myself for, for basketball. Basketball is a difficult sport to play. Um, and I realized that after I became a coach, like 15 years ago, that it's, it's something really hard to teach to children who have never played before. Um, so, you know, I would watch TV and watch some of the, you know, the uh, NBA players. My favorite player back then was Dr. J. <laughs> and uh, of course, when uh, when women's basketball came on the scene, um, um, Lucia Harris was like, oh, my goodness. Wow. She was, you know, like her name was always in the papers and things like that. And then, of course, the uh, you know, I, w- I should say the great late Lucia Harris. And then, um, of course, Charlotte Lewis was just my idol, you know, and um I really wanted to follow, you know, her and as far as being able to be an Olympian and things like that. And um, I remember I was at camp and, you know, she showed me her silver medal. And and that's when my eyes sparked up with the idea about, you know, maybe one day I can work hard enough to be an Olympian. So, yeah. What was your experience like representing black people in the world of sports? Um, I think when I first got a taste of international basketball, I was just so impressed by it. I, I had no idea of the level of basketball that was being played around the world until I actually had the chance to go there. So um, I think, you know, that kind of opened my eyes to about the possibility of traveling and seeing the world. And I'm, I've always been very, very adventurous as a kid and, um, you know, no fear and, uh, and always, you know, the one to take the dare. So um yeah, so I think, you know, being able to play in different countries and, and to be known um, in several countries for my basketball um, talents was, was just an exciting experience for me. And, you know, I just took the whole thing in. I just soaked it all up. I know. That's, that's pretty exciting. I know you gave us one of your role models that you looked up to, but was there any other role model that you looked up to? Oh, my, my parents definitely are, are, you know, well, God, and then, you know, thank God for, for everything I have. And of course, my parents and my family, they've always been my number one fans and always been behind me, supportive of me. That's, like I said before, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to stay closer to home, because I, I wanted them to see see me play. I wanted them to have the chance to, to follow my career and, um, you know, and give me little pointers here and there, mom and dad and my my sisters and my brother. and um, you know, of course, my grandparents were able to come to a few games. And um, what was most enjoyable for me was that in the Olympics, my, both of my grandparents were there. And um, that was just, you know, a dream come true for me, for my, my family to be able to support me and, and everything like that. So. That's, that's amazing that your family was able to come to like as many games as they did. Yes, 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 yes. Um, when you think about Black History Month, what does it <laughs> mean to you? It means a lot. I, I always think back about the trailblazers who, you know, not only had so much um, racism and so much discrimination and so much to fight against, but they just plowed through. They kept going so that we could have a Title IX here. You know, all of the African-American um, great athletes that weren't allowed to, you know, um, play in different leagues or, you know, go different places or, you know, I just think about the history of our, you know, um, African-American athletes and even today how, you know, we're here, we, we're, we, we arrived and we're here to stay, you know, and we're just going to keep pushing forward for more and more, 
you know, athletes and not just athletes, but everything, you know, from science to um, just everything, you know, history is just coming out of the walls, you know, wow, wow, we did this, wow, you know. So yeah, I think it's important that we keep educating the young, you know, uh, students about, you know, um, our past and our future to come. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. What is one thing about your Black history that you feel shaped you into the person you are today? Uh, I think I've always been real about who I am and where I came from and very proud of it and um, just pushing forward. Not um, I was raised to not, um, you know, look at the color of a person, but just to keep, you know, real to myself and treat that person how I would like to be treated. Um, there were a lot of instances where, you know, I could tell there was uh, racism and, you know, I would just not even uh, want to acknowledge that or, or, you know, have that a part of my life, as I'd say. So, you know, you have to look for the good in everybody and, um, and try not to make it such a, a big color barrier, you know, especially when I was out there playing in countries where I was like the only African-American out there, you know, um, you just learn to appreciate people and get to know them. And, you know, you take, keep people close in your life who know that they accept you for you and people that don't, you just don't allow them to enter in your, in your circle. So. Right. How do you think we as current athletes at, Il at Illinois state can, con can continue to contribute to black history in a meaningful way? Keep speaking out keep being, you know, about, you know, how uh, proud you are to be, you know, African-American, how proud you are of your roots and where you come from and, you know, and just continue to give to the community and, you know, um, just uh, like I said, just continue to, to be yourself and, you know, and treat others as like you want to be treated and um, be proud, always be proud. Of, of who you are and your background and where you came from. Don't ever forget that. Okay, well, that was the last question. Once again, thank you so much for hopping on the Zoom. And then once again, congratulations on an amazing career, coaching career. Like you, you just had an amazing <laughs> of coaching and playing. And I'm honestly honored to ask you these questions to meet you. It is an honor for me to meet you and go Redbirds. I'm keeping up with you guys. I always do. Um, Coach Gillespie, since uh, she's arrived to Illinois State, has done some fantastic, fantastic things. Um, I'm so proud of the program. I'm so proud to be a Redbird. I got on my shirt today representing, you know, <laughs> um, always once a Redbird, always a Redbird. Um, good luck. Uh, you guys are going to get this. This is the year 2020. Clinch it. <laughs> yes, man. <laughs> clinch the, clinch, clinch that NBC. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> you know, it's just I've always just been so proud and always speaking, you know, and very positive about the program and about the direction it's gone. And um, um, I love the uh, the team and um, I've been, you know, watching a few Whenever I can, I try and get some clips and, and uh, check you guys out. So uh, best of luck to you. Go Redbirds. Uh, you know, love my Redbirds, boy. So <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And best of luck to you. OK, thank you.